Okay, welcome back. And we're going to start with our drawing lesson number two. This is, again, still a relatively simple geometry. Um, the main takeaways here are learning to extrude multiple steps uh, to create more complex geometry. In this instance, we're going to keep our shapes very simple. Um, all of our sketches are also going to be very simple, and we'll just add a few extra tricks and twists into that so you learn how to do these things. Um, <clears throat> and in front of us we have a PDF uh, of a drawing of the geometry we're going to draw together here. Um, I throw this up on the screen just so you have a sense of where we're headed. Um, this PDF is also available on CoreSite. You can download it and that way you can look at the dimensions while you're following along. So when you need to type in a numeric value, it's right there in front of you. Um, so here is an isometric view of the geometry, a relatively simple base plate with another rectangle that's extruded on top of it. Uh, we're then going to cut out two circles and then add this fillet, which is hard to see in this view, but is much easier to see in the side view. Um, so we're showing the top, front, and side views of this object and all of the requisite dimensions are here. Um, just a note, uh, drawing standard wise, uh, both holes are here. One has a label for the diameter, one has the dimensions of where the, that hole is positioned. You can assume if only one hole is dimensioned that they are both mirror images of one another. And that's going to be important, that term mirroring is important for us in this first exercise. Um, so, with that, let's go into the Fusion 360 mode and we can start to draw this together. So let's get started with our drawing here. Open Fusion, I've opened a new tab and we're set to go ahead and start. So if you remember, that top view uh, was the one that showed kind of the holes and the raised rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead to create sketch and I'm going to choose the top plane as my primary sketch plane. So I'm going to hover over that, click on it to make it normal to the drawing surface and I'm going to get started with a rectangle. So uh, before we used a line to create uh, the shape, this time we're just going to use the rectangle. Um, if you go to the create menu, there's actually a couple different ways of creating a rectangle. There's the two point rectangle, three point rectangle and the center rectangle. We're going to go ahead and use just the standard two-point rectangle that's here. So we want to make sure that we're tied in to the origin point. So that's the first click for me. And that base rectangle is 100 by 200. Um, I'm going to zoom out here a little bit so I can make my rectangle a little bit larger. Just so I get close, that's probably fine. Um, and then I'm going to add the dimensions I need to add to dial in the size of this rectangle. Again, I clicked that second point. You'll notice that um, automatically I have one, two, three, four constraints. There's a fifth concentric constraint at the origin point here. These are showing that these two lines are horizontal. These are showing that these two lines are vertical. Two of my four lines are black. The other two are blue. Again, my goal to turn all of those black. So I start the dimension tool. I'm going to come down here to my bottom line, click on it anywhere in the middle, let go, click to position that dimension. This is 100. Dimension tool is still active, so I'm going to click the left hand edge or right hand edge, it doesn't matter, and make this 200. You'll see the geometry responds to that. With those two dimensions, all of my lines turn black and it's fully defined. Um, with that, I can go ahead and finish this sketch. So I finish the sketch. It returns me back to the orthographic view of this. I can zoom out just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and add an extrusion here. So I click extrude. Um, I'm going to grab this and pull it up 10 millimeters. Again, you can also just highlight the distance and type in 10 if you want. And that is going to lock in that dimension for me. Um, OK, so I'm going to click the Home tab here to just set that back in the middle of my drawing surface. Okay, so that's the base plate. The next step is to draw that other rectangle that appears down here. So 
our process up until this point has been to start a sketch and extrude it. Nothing has changed with this second part. Um, I'm going to go back up here to create sketch. I'm going to hover over this top surface. So instead of choosing one of these planes, right, now I'm actually going to choose, I can choose a surface of an existing object. So this is relatively new. We don't have to just draw on a plane, now we can draw on a surface. So I'm going to make sure that this top surface of the rectangle is highlighted. Click on it to select that. Again, Fusion is going to make that normal to my surface. I'm going to zoom out and pan up just a little bit so I can see that bottom edge. Again, that was done with the scroll wheel by clicking and holding the scroll wheel of my mouse up. Um, FYI, I didn't say this in the in the, um, the tutorial talking about how to use the user interface, but if you're using a trackpad, it's going to be very difficult. Um, best thing to do is get yourself a three-button mouse because it's going to ease your pain a lot. Okay, so I'm here. This is active. Just going to choose another rectangle again, corner rectangle. Starting at the bottom left corner, you know that if you click here, it will click on that corner because it's highlighted with that blue box. Click there. I'm going to pull up and over to the right. And because I want that rectangle to go over the entire width of my rectangle, if I pull this over, you'll see that you get that blue X. That means it's going to snap to the edge. It's going to lock the width of the rectangle to your base geometry. So that's what I want to do. I'm going to let it lock over there. I'm not going to be too worried about this height. If I look at my drawing, the height is supposed to be 25 millimeters. I'm in that neighborhood. Um, go ahead and click, and it will lock in that geometry. You'll notice now we have three black sides, one blue side yet to deal with. I'm going to deal with that with a simple dimension. So go to my sketch dimension tool or simply type D for dimension. And left or right edge, it doesn't matter which, left edge is fine. Click on that, pull away, position my dimension, and I'm going to do 25 millimeters as my height. You see the minute I type that in, um, it locks in those dimensions and uh, we're set to go. That's it. That's it for that sketch. Simple rectangle. Click finish sketch. And now we want to go ahead and extrude that. So I want to extrude that an additional 20 millimeters up. So I'm going to click my extrude button. And I want you to see what happens. Now, first of all, um, when we did that first extrusion, the profile was automatically selected. Now that there's multiple profiles available, it isn't automatically selected. So I actually need to tell Fusion which one of these profiles I want to extrude. The cool thing about Fusion is both of these become active profiles. So I could grab this profile and pull it up or push it down. I could grab this and pull it up or push it down. I could actually even grab one of these edges and pull it out if I wanted to. Um, but in this case, I want to grab this surface. So I'm click on that to select it. You'll notice now it says one selected. You can accidentally also grab two, and now both are selected. It'll move both of these up or down. Um, I'm going to deselect that and go back to that first one. And I want to give this a height of 20 millimeters. OK. And then I can click OK. And it's going to add that height of 20 millimeters to my box. So pretty straightforward. Now we want to deal with the holes. That's the next step, and that is yet another sketch. You'll notice our timeline is building out here. We have our first sketch, which is that base plate, our first extrude, our second sketch, which is that little rectangle, and then that rectangle extrusion coming up. So um, you see that timeline changing. You'll also see if I open up the sketches here, I have two sketches. We're going to do yet a third sketch, so same deal. Go to Create Sketch, hover over this surface to select it, makes that normal to my monitor surface. And this time I'm going to go gra grab a circle. So again, circle, there's a lot of different ways of grabbing circles. Center diameter is the default tool. Um, if you know radiuses, you can change to radius if you want um, in how you uh, give in dimension. Um, but otherwise, center diameter is the default. Two point, three point, tangent. Uh, and a three tangent or a two tangent circle. So the two tangent requires a radius, the three tangent is just three tangent points. Those are all very useful. But in this case, we're using the default, the center rectangle, or sorry, the center circle. Um, click some point on the rectangle, pull away from that. 
I'm not too concerned about the size of that just yet. Type in D for sketch dimension or click the tool. First thing I'm gonna do, click the outside edge of the circle and set the diameter of this circle. So the diameter of this circle happens to be 18. So I'm gonna click, type in 18. That locks in the diameter. Now I need to position where that circle goes. So I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna go back here, hover over the circle, click the edge of the circle, and then I'm gonna click the top edge. You'll see it's giving me that diameter again, but this time I'm gonna click the top edge of my rectangle, and if I pull to the left, this is gonna give me the distance from the center of the circle to that top edge. And according to our drawing, that is 20 millimeters. And I'm gonna do similar thing one more time. So click the outside edge of the circle, and this time I'm gonna click the left edge of my rectangle and pull away. And that's gonna give me the distance from the left edge to the center of the circle, and that wants to be 25 millimeters. So I'm gonna type those in. Now, I could absolutely do that same process again. I could draw a circle and I could add all of those dimensions, but that's not very efficient. We always wanna draw in the most efficient way possible when we're creating a drawing. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to first uh, get out of the dimension tool by hitting escape. I'm gonna to go to my line tool and I'm going to drop a center line that I can mirror about. So my center line is gonna be based on the midpoint. So you'll notice that my line command is active. I'm gonna hover over here and when I get close, you'll see that little blue triangle appears, right? That blue triangle indicates midpoint. And so it's giving me the midpoint of this top line. So I get close to that, I see that X show up that it's gonna lock into that top corner and it's giving me that blue triangle. At that point, I can click and I'm gonna pull down, straight down, and you'll see when I get to this bottom edge of that other rectangle, it's giving me that blue triangle again with the X, and it's also giving me the perpendicular symbol, meaning that that line I just dropped is perpendicular to the intersecting rectangle. Um, it's also over here on the left showing me that it's 90 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and click there, uh, and that creates that line. Now. Right now that line is bisecting our geometry and because it's a solid black line, Fusion 360 is thinking of it as part of the geometry. We wanna tell Fusion, ignore that line. And the way we do that, I'm gonna hit escape to get out of the, the line tool. So I just go back to my regular cursor mode and I'm gonna click on that line and then over here on my sketch palette where it says construction, I'm gonna click that little button on the top. That's gonna make that line dotted and that's also gonna make Fusion ignore that line as a major, um, a, uh, a major geometry line. It's now relegated to construction geometry. What this now gives me is a mirror line that I can mirror about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight my blue circle. Again, I don't have anything active, so I click the edge of the circle, come up here to my mirror tool. Again, it's also in this create menu down here under mirror but mine's up in my quick tools. Click on mirror, objects. It says one selected. You can see the one that's selected. If for some reason you didn't select it beforehand, you can go in and select it uh, afterwards. And then under mirror line, it says select. So whatever is highlighted blue is the thing that you can add to. So uh, I could select like this line and now there's two objects selected. Well, I don't want two objects, so I'm gonna click the X there and I'm gonna select that line for the outside edge of my circle. Mirror line, I wanna be able to select that. So I'm gonna click where it says select. I turn that, blocks, that box blue. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit this dash line here. You'll see it's giving you a phantom projection of what that looks like. Yep, that looks good to me. And I click okay. Now I have both circles there locked in on the geometry. The cool thing about this is if I take this and I double click on that 25 because I type that wrong or I decide later that I want that to be 22, I can type in 22 and you'll see that both circles follow that same direction, right? So they're now locked together because of that mirror command. Um, I can return that back to 25 and hit enter. So if you wanna change any of these dimensions, all you have to do is just double click on them. Uh, you can change them 
Look, if I change it to 5, it moves the circles up together, um, but we want that to be 20, so I'm going to move it back down. So that locks in my circles. Now I'm done with that sketch. That's it. Finish the sketch. All right, now this is a little counterintuitive. Um, we're going to go ahead and extrude those circles, but instead of doing an extrude where we add material, we're going to do an extrude where we remove material. So I'm just going to go back up here to my extrude command. It's asking me to select what I want to extrude. I'm going to select both of these circles, okay? So you'll see that it says two are selected. Under operation here, I'm going to switch to cut. And now, how thick is this base plate? If we remember when we did that base plate, that base plate was 10 millimeters thick. So theoretically, I could grab these and I could extrude them 10 millimeters thick. And if I do that and click OK, those holes will in fact go all the way through. So I'm just going to orbit around here. You'll see if I look at the bottom of this, those holes go all the way through. So that's fine. The thing that we want to set ourselves up for though is to create a virtual geometry so that if I need to edit it in the future, it is as easy as possible to edit. And so what would happen now if, uh, say, a manufacturer called and they didn't have 10 millimeter plate, they only had 12 millimeter plate. Well, I might want to go back in and do a finite element analysis on this part to make sure it was going to stand up to the rigors of, uh, of what I was going to put it through. Um, and for that to happen, I would have to go in and, and re redraw this part. The lovely thing about fusion is I don't have to redraw it, I can just modify the existing geometry. So if that happened and my manufacturer called and said, hey, I need, I only have 12 millimeter plate, will that work? I would simply go in here and be like, oh, okay, the base plate is this first sketch. I'm going to go to where I extruded it. I'm going to right click on top of that. and I'm going to click edit feature. And that's going to bring up this, this value here and I'm going to change that to 12 and then click OK. When I do that, what it does is it changes the thickness of that plate, right? So that plate's now gotten 12 millimeters thick. But because I only extruded that cut 10 millimeters in depth, now my holes don't go all the way through. So there's a very easy way to solve that. If you know as a designer, if my design intent is for these holes to go all the way through that part, then what I can do is I'm going to go back now to where those holes are. I'm going to right click over that uh, feature, click edit feature. Instead of doing my extent here as a distance, I'm going to do my extent here as a two all. And what that means is no matter the thickness of that plate, those holes will go all the way through. So that plate could be 12 millimeters thick, it could be 50 millimeters thick, that hole is going to carry all the way through. All right, so uh, there is uh, the holes. The last thing I need to do to this geometry is add that little fillet. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to hold down the shift key and my mouse button so I can scroll around or rotate around here and see the view in this direction. And I'm going to add the fillet. This is really easy to do. Uh, under modify here, there's this fillet tool. It's not fillet, by the way. It's that's a piece of fish or a piece of chicken. Um, this is a fillet. Uh, this just rounds corners. So I click on the fillet tool. It's allowing me to select things. I'm going to go in here, hover until I see that edge selected. And I can, like, you know, I can push and pull this if I want to. But we know that this is a five millimeter. Oh, I stopped it in a good place. But if, if I didn't, I can always go and highlight this and make that five millimeter radius. And that's going to give me that little round over there for that part. So that is the geometry, and that is how we build it. Pretty simple. Um, three sketches, one, two, three. Three extrudes, one, two, three, and a fillet. They're all here. We can go back in our timeline and edit them. We can move our timeline back and go back step by step if we want to, to see how these things transform. Um, and we can change them moving forward. So that's the beauty of this. Okay, hopefully that was easy. You could follow along and uh, we'll move on to our next lesson in, uh, in due course. All right, thank you so much for listening and I'll see you soon.